Hi, I'm Elizabeth Woods. I'm a nurse with MMLearn.org, and I'm here to talk with you today about how adaptive clothing might be a good option for you if you've found that getting dressed or undressed has become difficult for you or the person that you're caring for. Uh, one of the things we hear from caregivers fairly often is how surprised they are that seemingly simple tasks can become difficult and frustrating. And one of the most difficult things about caring for a person with um, physical limitations is helping them get dressed or undressed. And so we've done some research about adaptive clothing and um, how it might help you or the person that you're caring for have a little bit of an easier time with getting dressed or undressed. We'll start by talking about what exactly is adaptive clothing. It's basically clothes that are modified to allow for easier dressing or undressing by, of a patient or a resident by a caregiver. And the great thing about these clothes is that they look and feel like regular clothes, but they're just easier to put on or take off. There are many benefits to adaptive clothing for both patients and caregivers, and if we look at the benefits for the patient, one of the things that they do is they minimize awkward and painful joint movements. Um, patients who have limited mobility because of conditions like uh, stroke or um, shoulder surgery or other physically debilitating conditions um, may have a difficult time being able to raise their arms over their head or reach them back into sleeves and the clothes that we're going to show you today don't require those kind of awkward and painful joint movements and may um, make it a little easier to put their clothes on and off. Another benefit of adaptive clothing is that it helps reduce emotional stress. And now there are a variety of reasons why dressing can be stressful for people. Uh, one may be that somebody becomes very frustrated because they used to know how to put a button through a buttonhole and now they just can't get their fingers to make it work. And so for people who are frustrated because they can't put their shoes on like they used to or they can't button their shirts like they want to or they can't put a shirt on over their head and reach their arms up through it, that can be really frustrating and cause a lot of stress for people. And so we're going to show you some options of different types of clothes that would help reduce that emotional stress. Now, dressing can also be stressful for people um, who don't like to be handled or moved or manipulated. And so the clothes that we're going to show you require a lot less movement and are uh, a lot easier for caregivers to get on a patient without a whole lot of movement required by the patient. And lastly, the, uh, the last benefit that we're going to talk about of adaptive clothing is that this can really help support a sense of well-being for um, your loved one or for yourself. Nobody wants to spend their time in institutional type clothes like a hospital gown. And the clothes that we're going to show you today look a lot more like regular clothes than institutional clothing. And then we're also going to show you ways that you can take your normal clothes and maybe have them modified to become adaptive clothing where you can still have your own sense of style and your own sense of fashion, um, but it's not quite as hard to get the clothes on as, um, as you do in the traditional sense. Now, as we look at the benefits of adaptive clothing for caregivers, the first one we're going to talk about is that it reduces physical strain associated with dressing a patient. A lot of times, putting a patient's clothes on or, or taking their clothes off requires lifting, repositioning, or turning. And as you'll see, the clothes that we're going to show you today don't require as much manipulating, lifting, turning. And so it really reduces the risk of injury to the caregiver because it makes the clothes easier to put on and off uh, because you don't have to move the, the person that you're caring for as much. And then like we talked about at the beginning, we hear that um, dressing can be one of those things that takes way more time and causes a whole lot of stress um, for people who are caring for somebody with um, physical disabilities. And so these clothes might make it uh, a little easier to put clothes on and, and take those clothes off um, than traditional or conventional clothes would. And so maybe that gives you a little bit of extra time in your day. We're going to look now at um, actual examples of different types of adaptive clothes and we'll start with tops um, and shirts. The first shirt that we're going to look at is uh, one that instead of having um, buttons that go through a buttonhole, it's a button down shirt that looks just like a, tradi a traditional button, uh, that looks just like a traditional button down shirt. Um, but it has Velcro or magnetic closures behind the buttons. And so it doesn't require that fine motor skill of being able to put a button through a buttonhole. And this would be good for patients with limited dexterity or who may not be able to move their hands in those fine uh, motions to be able to close buttons, but they can still wear a shirt that looks the same as a regular button-down shirt. 
The second type of shirt that we're going to look at is one that opens to the back instead of the front. And so instead of having to take your arms and put them back through a shirt, um, this can be simply slipped on from the front so the patient wouldn't necessarily have to lift their arms hardly at all. Um, and the caregiver can slip it up and over the shirt and then secure the back of the shirt closed. And as you can see on the slide, we have options for women, for men, and the one in the middle is a night shirt that was marketed to both men and women. Um, now, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, you can purchase clothes like this, or um, these are modifications that could be made to somebody's own clothes. So you could take this to a seamstress, or maybe you know how to do this yourself, but the shirt could be split down the back. Um, there could be some sort of closure added, like snaps or Velcro, and um, that would allow the person to keep wearing a shirt that they love, but, um, but not have to move their arms maybe in a painful way to get it on. The next type of shirt we're going to look at is one that opens at the shoulder. And this is a good option for somebody who, again, can't lift their arms up over their head. Um, if, if that would be difficult for, um, for you to put your shirt on that way, this could be slipped on all the way up from your feet and then secured over your shoulders. Or if you're a caregiver dressing somebody who might need help dressing, this could go all the way over the person's top half of their body and then fastened over the shoulder. So you can see that it doesn't require nearly as much movement as putting a shirt on over uh, your head and then slipping your arms up through the sleeves. And as you can see, these are shirts that are made for men and women. Um, they look like just a normal t-shirt or a normal shirt. And so um, it's just a little easier to get on and not necessarily um, something that looks like uh, an adaptive shirt at all. The next type of shirt that we're going to look at is one that opens completely down the sides. And so there's kind of two options here, as you'll see on the pictures on the slide. One is one that doesn't open at the shoulders. It still goes on over the head, just like a traditional shirt, but then it's secured down the sides. And then the other is one that opens at the shoulders, but then also opens down the sides. So you can see that that wouldn't require a whole lot of movement by the person being dressed at all. And we have a friend of mmlearn.org who was nice enough to make us an example of one of these shirts. And she did it much like the one on the left side of the screen. So she just found uh, a regular men's undershirt. And we will show you the tutorial video, tutorial video that she used at the end of the presentation. Um, but what she did was she um, opened up the seam down each side of the shirt. And she showed two different options. Uh, she puts snaps down one side of the shirt and she put velcro down the other just so you could see that it could be done either way and if um, somebody were to help me get dressed with this shirt they would just put it over my head and obviously it wouldn't require very much movement from me at all so it would go down over my head and then without me having to lift my arms at all uh, a caregiver could easily snap it down this side or velcro it either way uh, the shirt was made and so you can see that it's, um, it doesn't require a whole lot of movement for me, but I still get to wear a normal shirt that looks like um, a regular shirt and not necessarily a hospital gown. As you can also see, these can be made in a variety of sleeve lengths. So if you have somebody who gets hot all the time, you could do it with a short sleeve shirt or a sleeveless shirt. Um, and then the example on the left side of this slide also shows that it could be done with a sweatshirt. So it, it's, you're not limited by the sleeve length. So people could be comfortable in these. Now we're going to look at some different types of adaptive pants. And the two... Um, first two types of pants that we're going to look at are ones that open down the sides. And the first of these is they just open partially down the sides. So they can, um, by opening down the sides, they have a much larger opening and are easier to pull up than, say, a traditional pair of pants that just has a small zipper down the middle. Um, these can be um, unzipped down both sides, again, to create a much larger opening so they're easier to pull up your legs or someone you're caring for's legs. Um, and then the example on the right side of this slide shows an option that's available with not only zippers down uh, the sides of the pants, but they also have zippers on the insides of the pants, which these would be 
a good option for somebody who may have incontinence issues. And you can kind of see by looking at the picture on the slide, you could unzip the, in, the outside and the inside zippers, fold the pants down towards the patient's feet, provide the incontinence care, fold them back up uh, around their waist and zip them up and you're not having to pull pants all the way down and then all the way back up again to be able to provide that incontinence care. So that might just require a little less movement of the patient, a little less movement of the patient by the caregiver. So that might be an option for you if you're caring for somebody who may have problems with incontinence. The next type of pants that we're going to look at are ones that open all the way down the sides. And the two pictures that we have on the slide are of full length pants, but this can also be done with boxers <clears throat> or shorts. These are just a little easier to get on the patient, especially for a patient who's not able to bear weight or not able to stand up. Because by um, taking the pants and opening them up all the way down the side, you can position the back of the pants underneath the patient and then pull the pants up through the patient's legs and fasten them on the sides. We have an example here of boxer shorts that were done this way. And again, these are, we have two different ways of doing this. They could be done with snaps or they could be done with Velcro. <clears throat> and you could see that this could be put under a patient. So you put the back under the patient, roll them back over onto the top, and then pull the front of the pants through the patient's legs, secure them down the sides, and they're able to get their pants or their boxer shorts on without having to stand up. So that might be a good option for you if you're caring for somebody who isn't able to stand up. Um, this would maybe make it a little bit easier. The last type of pants that we're going to talk about are wheelchair pants. And these are pants that can be put onto a patient in a wheelchair without the patient ever having to stand up. And so the way that it's done is that it's slipped over the patient's legs <clears throat> pulled up to their waist and then there are two flaps in the back, one overlaps the other, so it's pulled around the patient's waist and the, the overlapping flaps uh, make sure that the patient is covered and has privacy while sitting or while standing. And so this is something if you're caring for somebody in a wheelchair and they're not able to stand up, this might be a good option for you. And there's a lot of information on these pants of how these can be used and are very helpful for for people who may have problems with incontinence. It makes um, providing that incontinence care a little bit easier. And the last type of adaptive clothing we're going to look at today are adaptive shoes. These are, as you can see from the pictures on the slides, um, most of the time they're going to be shoes that have Velcro openings at the top so the patient can simply step their foot straight down into the shoe and then the shoe can be fastened or um, secured around their foot and there are so many different options of these types of shoes out there and I found house shoes, um, there are shoes for patients uh, with diabetes, for people struggling with swelling in their feet, there's just all different kinds of options out there um, and they're just easier to get on by stepping straight down into that shoe instead of having to slide your foot down and into a shoe and you've got like I said, you have house shoes, you have tennis shoes, slippers, all different things available. They're made for men, they're made for women. If you do a search for adaptive shoes, you'll be really surprised at all the different options that are available. All right, so we have looked at several different types of adaptive clothes today, and most of the pictures that we've shown you have been from um, the sources that you see on this screen, uh, on this slide. The top bullet, um, the adaptive clothing companies, uh, these are for a lot of the pictures, like I said, are clothes that we took pictures of from their websites. There's one called Silverts Adaptive Clothing and Footwear. There's another called Resident Essentials Adaptive Clothing, one called Buck and Buck. And then there's also a website called 1-800-Wheelchair.com. And these have um, dedicated inventories of adaptive clothing. And if you go to their websites, you can easily navigate to um, their online selection of adaptive clothes. Now, others that we found, um, we did find quite a few different um, options available on Amazon, eBay. There are quite a few sellers on Etsy who make these types of clothes. Um, and will allow you to customize them to what you want. So you can pick the color, you can pick the size. 
Um, and so that's something. And then Walmart did also have some available on their website. You're not limited to just what you see on this slide. If you do an internet search for adaptive clothing, you'll be able to find all different sources available out there for where you can purchase these types of clothes. And if you're up for trying a project, um, there are a lot of tutorial videos where you can learn how to take an existing shirt and turn it into an adaptive shirt. Like I said, we had somebody make these for us and this is the link to the video that she used to be able to guide her through that. Um, I found a lot of information on Pinterest about adaptive clothes and then you could also if you would like to take your own clothes or your loved ones clothes to a local alteration shop I'm sure there's somebody there who will be able to make these changes and make their clothes into adaptive clothing. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you so much for watching. We always love to hear your feedback and your comments, so if you would take our survey, we would really appreciate it. You can leave a comment. You can leave suggestions. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.